Kevin Durant now with another team. He's 34. I, I'm just wondering if how is history going to treat Kevin Durant when it's all said and done? Yeah, I mean, you'd actually be a really good person to say that because your perspective over the long haul, uh, your voice, you know, contributes to that. Um, I am somebody who has inc- in- incredible admiration for Durant's uh, abilities and and the way he's recovered from injuries. And I will always appreciate what Durant did at the 2020 Olympics, Rex Weir, and played in 2021. He's coming off an Achilles injury. Really probably should not have been, should not have been playing. Went over to Tokyo, and I'm telling you, I don't know how many people remember those Olympics because, you know, it was a weird part of the schedule. The NBA season was like, had just ended, and they were doing the draft and free agency, like, while they were playing. Durant saved USA's backside. He, I mean, Popovich did some moves. Um, you know, Drew Holiday and Devin Booker flew over right from the finals, but they were going to lose a couple of those games, and Durant just absolutely carried the U.S. to the gold medal. Um, it is as much of an accomplishment as has happened in, in, uh, U- team USA basketball in the history of the program. I don't think he just gets the proper credit for it. And I also am a very big believer that the Warriors don't win those two, those two finals without him. The 2017 Cavs team, the, the first one that they won, they won that series four one. that 2017 Cavs team was loaded. They were awesome. That was when Kyrie and LeBron were at their peak playing together. The Cavs had made some ad- additions to that team and um, got some three-point shooting. They went 12-1 and one through the East playoffs. Now, I will not defend that the East was exactly that deep that year, but that team was awesome. They don't beat that team without Durant. And the concept to me that Durant so was a, you know, a, 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 you know a riding in the back of the bus to use Charles Barkley's, with all due respect, I just don't think that's true. I think I think Durant was sitting uh, shotgun with uh, Steph Curry and the, he won, they won the next year, the next year the, the Kyrie had been traded and that wasn't the same, but then in 2019, the Warriors lost because Durant got hurt. You know, like, I think that case is better if they go up against, you know, Supreme Kawhi Leonard in 2019 and then they, you know, they roll over the Raptors four one, but excuse me, my good friends, <laughs> they lost Durant and they, and they fell apart. They couldn't win. So like, to me, I don't think his legacy needs an iota, but I know that he feels that pressure. And and, and frankly, people keep calling about how it's a it's a it's a tragedy, a basketball tragedy. I got to qualify the basketball tragedy that those Nets never played together. Well, it's a tragedy that Kevin Durant lost, you know, three years of his career and chances other titles messing around with a guy who wasn't serious about it. You know, Kyrie undercut that team. And then the Harden thing, Harden bears some responsibility. Um, but he, those are three prime years that he could have stayed in Golden State and won some more. And now here he is in his mid-30s sort of thrashing around again, trying to figure out, you know, a foothold. And that's just not fair to him. That's not, he, is a, he, he deserves much better than that. And he made the choice to get it into that uh, marriage, that basketball marriage with Kyrie. So he has to to accept that. And that was a very risky decision he didn't need to make, but he doesn't deserve the way he's been treated in my opinion. And he's going to end up with what? 35,000 points. Maybe when it's all said and done, I'm, I'm guessing. And he could have just stayed in Oklahoma city and probably been in a foot race with LeBron for that record. He he's chosen to give up the opportunity to score. Although the injuries probably would have held him back. 